Scandals aren't pretty, and it looks like James Krause has his hands full with them these days. UFC is no stranger to these types of things, but you gotta draw the line somewhere. We're sure anyone who worked with him was pretty shocked about it. Matt Brown is. In this video, we'll be telling you all about his thoughts on the betting scandal the retired MMA fighter got himself into. Let's get right into it. First off, he thinks he stepped too far. Let's paint a clear picture first, shall we? So the Nevada Athletic Commission has suspended the veteran coach and retired fighter as part of an ongoing investigation into betting irregularities. This, of course, means that the UFC has effectively cut all ties with him. On Friday, they informed athletes and managers that anyone who continues to work with Kraus, either as a coach or simply as a member of his Glory MMA and Fitness Gym, will no longer be permitted to compete in the promotion. Any buddies of his have to trend very carefully now. They also made it clear that government investigations are being conducted into the situation. It all started from a fight in which Derek Minner lost at UFC Vegas 64, Kraus coached him, and he lost after lines shifted against him in the hours leading up to the fight. This leads us to Matt Brown, who always had a good relationship with James. They worked together on The Ultimate Fighter Season 25 and kept it cool even afterward. But that's changed now, and he thinks that the player has straight up doomed his future. On The Fighter vs. The Writer, he said that he always thought he was a good dude, smart with coaching, really good with business stuff too, he even helped him out in the department, but this time he stepped a little too far. There might be no coming back from this. Up next, he's never seen anything like this. You'd think someone who's been in the game for this long has seen a lot. Well, this is a first for Brown. He was quick to clarify that he does not approve of this at all. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship they had before, it's over once you do something as unprofessional as this. The fighter said James overstepped his boundaries and looked like Pete Rose. Yeah, he said that. That's a pretty crazy comparison, but it makes sense. To cut it short, Matt said that the guy is pretty much damned. He also said that everything he has worked for is gonna go down the drain now. A massive L, no doubt about it. He's never seen anything like it, and it's very sad. The 14-year UFC veteran even recalled a time when they all were warned about this exact thing too. It scared him to no end. Coming up, the warning Krauss never took seriously. In fact, he claimed that the training he got from a Federal Bureau of Investigation agent scared him out of ever participating in anything related to gambling or the UFC. It was that serious, you guys. They all did a UFC summit back in 2010 or 2011, and these were annual. As this one, they brought in all the fighters and had them listen to speeches. One of the speakers was an FBI agent, and he talked about sports betting and just how dangerous the consequences are. It's tempting, but it's not worth all the trouble. Then, Brown also talked about how many people just turned the other cheek. Funny enough, it all kind of fell off now, according to him, everyone's promoting betting. It might be surprising, but with all these betting sites out there, it's a pretty common practice. Everyone has talked about it all the time, too. Matt even said that he's heard of coaches engaging in it as well. This was always at the back of his mind that someone was going to get into trouble. When all is said and done, he did say he felt sorry it had to be James Kraus because he really likes him. And now, Brown's benefit of the doubt? Kraus hasn't been charged in connection with the investigation, and we don't know if he will ever face permanent sanctions. Brown explained, that he's just been accused and that they don't have all the facts. Giving the guy the benefit of the doubt seems to be the route he's taken, innocent till proven guilty, right? After sticking up for his friend, he didn't deny that his reputation had gone down a deep, deep hole. Something he's not sure he'll be able to get out of, it isn't looking good for him. As for what he wants to say to him, he just said he'll tell him hello and good luck because, again, he is quite fond of him. As a coach and athlete, he has seen many people firsthand participate in sports betting, especially especially coaches, the guys with the inside info. It happens in every sport, but the lights on the UFC this time, nobody's perfect. Following up, a price to pay. The American mixed martial artist said that he sees the situation as someone who went a little too far without knowing it. To him, his friend probably didn't break the law in some instances, neither did he do anything to implicate himself sometimes, but in a way, we don't know for sure. Gambling's a slippery slope for sure, the line of morality moved a lot, according to him, and now he has to pay the price price for it. He's already been suspended. Let's wait and see what decision the organization comes to. That being said, Matt is super disappointed and upset about it. Now, let's look at how the UFC only has itself to blame for the James Krause betting scandal. 
Firstly, UFC's negligence compared to the NFL. Like we said, this type of thing is rampant across every sport. What sets each apart is how people deal with this. The UFC has recognized this fact shown by its partnerships with betting sites such as DraftKings and the rise in legalized sports betting. The difference between the two organizations is that the NFL recognized this fact years ago. Unfortunately for the UFC, the light bulb didn't turn on bright enough for the organization to notice until mid-October. This was when they released a memo that banned fighters from betting on fights in their new code of conduct. It's a lengthy document, but it's very comprehensive. It's also a little late to the party. Lest we forget, the NFL has been on top of players betting on NFL games, at least publicly since 1963. No one can forget when it suspended two of its biggest stars, Paul Hornung and Alex Karras, for placing bets on games. Afterward, the owners gave the league the authority to increase sanctions and raise the fine ceiling, according to a 2002 story in the Journal of Sports History. Up next, Dana White's statements on the code of conduct. Today, the NFL's gambling policy is five full pages long, and it ticks every box. Just a fact that makes you realize just how seriously they've taken the matter since Hornung and Karras. The message that their suspensions gave was that the NFL safeguarded the game's integrity and image. Dana White also agreed, saying that the UFC code of conduct was more optics than anything else. What White and the UFC failed to recognize was that it should have addressed the issue of allowing fighters, coaches, teammates, and others with potential inside information to bet on fights a long time ago. Optics play a part, sure, but you gotta enforce a rule before it's too late. They could have taken action many times before. An example of this is when they warned Tae Yoon Bang and Leo Kuntz about fight fixing back in 2017, but they didn't when they should have put their foot down. Instead, they waited until after they signed a five-year deal with DraftKings worth a reported $350 million in 2021, and until sports betting was legal in some form in most states in the United States. Last but not least, the consequences of inaction. Before they did anything about fighters and coaches betting on the promotion in which they competed, something else happened. A prominent coach and ex-UFC fighter appeared on a major MMA podcast and bragged all about how much money he was making betting on UFC fights. Their inaction was exposed in 2017 when Bang was found guilty of accepting bribes and sentenced to prison in connection with the fight-throwing scheme. Since the incident occurred in South Korea before the Supreme Court decided to allow legalized gambling in the United States, the promotion was dropped quicker than you could say a word. We can't say the same about James Krause, though. Yes, the UFC is run by smart folks. It's unclear why the promotion did not prohibit fighters, coaches, and camps from betting on UFC fights before 2022. They've been strict about many many things, telling fighters they must wear branded fight kits and they cannot have outside sponsors at UFC events, that they must be drug tested and all that. So of course they're not above implementing laws on betting. It's quite mind-boggling they waited this long. Well, that's all for this video. What do you think of Matt Brown's stance on the James Krause scandal? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.